the Euclidean algorithm and continued fractions. For the uh, Euclidean algorithm, you get a greatest common denominator. This is the normal way it's uh, introduced at school uh, these days. Uh, Euclid used the subtraction method. And this is going to be a visual method where the uh, two numbers are the uh, width and length of a rectangle. Subtract the width of the rectangle from the length of the rectangle. You get 12 minus 5 uh, arithmetically. Visually, you got this. Here's the uh, devising uh, method of division. And uh, you continue the process. You get another residual rectangle, 5 by 2, 5 by 2, etc. Another residual rectangle. You continue the process till you get down to a square. Now you've got 1 is the greatest common denominator. The same thing here. You get, uh, get down to 0, and it's the prior uh, remainder. Now, the uh, quotients here are 2s, and the continued fraction, you'd see the 2s down here. The way I would introduce that, k to 12, you have two divisor symbols here. Take the second from the last, that's this one, and underneath it you've got a mixed number. Convert that to an improper fraction, in this case 5 over 2. Invert that, it's 1 over 5 over 2, so it becomes 2 over 5. Now you've got 2 plus 2 over 5, convert that to a... Uh, rational, and it would be, in this case, to, in order to add them, it would be uh, 10 fifths. So 10 fifths plus 2 fifths equals 12 fifths. Okay, a few more examples. Now this would be another method of uh, dividing out the Euclidean algorithm. 8 goes into 14 one time, remainder 6. 6 goes into 8 one time, remainder 2. 2 goes into 6 three times, remainder 0. That makes 2 the greatest common denominator. That's reflected in the uh, rectangular grid by the smallest square being a 2 by 2 square. Uh, the continued fraction itself would look something like this. 1 plus 1 third, which would be 4 thirds. 1 over 4 thirds would be 3 fourths, and that would be uh, 4 fourths plus 3 fourths is 7 fourths, which is proportional to 14 eighths. And uh, notice the... Uh, Greatest common denominator, 2 by 2, 2 by 2. 2 times 7, 2 times 4 is 14 eighths, which is the size of the grid. Next, one more. Greatest common denominator, 3, which is the size of the smallest square. Uh, continued fraction is, uh, let's see, 6 fifths. Uh, 1 over 6 fifths is 5 sixths, plus uh, 6 sixths is 11 sixths times uh, the 3 by 3. 3 is 33. 3 times 6 is 18. And that's the size of the grid. Let's see. There should be one more example. Do it out here. Let's do this one. Uh, we'll use a uh, an approximation of 1.41 decimal, which becomes 141 over 100. Here's the uh, long one. Here's the visual uh, representation, the geometric representation. As you can see, each um, let me zoom in on this a little bit more. As you can see, each um, square is a multiple of the previous one. And show all. Now we go into this. One and a half down here becomes uh, three halves. One over three halves becomes two thirds. One plus two thirds would be, let's see, uh, three thirds plus two thirds, five thirds. 1 over 5 thirds becomes 3 fifths. Again, inversions, uh, uh, mixed numbers and inversions are fairly basic to K12, so this would be uh, within range of that uh, age group. Three, fifths, uh, 3 plus 3 fifths would be, let's see, 15 fifths plus 3 fifths, 18 fifths. 1 over 18 fifths is uh, 5 eighteenths. 2 plus 5 eighteenths is would be 36 eighteenths plus 5 eighteenths is 41, which you notice is up there. It's getting approaching something we can recognize. There we go. 41 eighteenths uh, inverted 1841s. 2 is, uh, let's see, 82 41sts. Plus 18 is 141sts. There we go. Inverted is 41 one hundredths. 1 is 100 hundredths. Now you got that, and there it's proved. Okay, and that's what I wanted to uh, have the uh, app do. And you can also show a finite continued fraction algebraically. 
And this uh, illustration I got from the uh, Euclidean, uh, Euclidean algorithm article in Wikipedia. And it, all I did was add in the letter names and the numbers so you can see the relationships a little bit clearer. Uh, there's two types of units here. One is the square units, which would re represent the area. The other is the linear units. And in each case, the side of the smallest square indicates the unit. I'm not going to show you why I would like the continued fractions in the first place. So for something like an irrational number, like for the square root of 2, continued fraction will show a regular pattern. It, ev it evaluates to a sequence of uh, rational approximations, which approximate closer and closer to the uh, decimal representation of uh, the square root of 2. You can also show pi with a more complex variation on the uh, continued fraction. You just have to know that the regular pattern exists. It's the odd number squared over a sequence of 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 forever. And it sort of makes pi, just the idea that a rational approximation exists it makes pi more interesting. At least it did so for me. Okay, I'll go into infinite continued fractions uh, uh, the next uh, video.